Have you ever struggled with feedback during your live gigs, church service, corporate events, whatever it is you're doing? Sometimes the person speaking into the microphone is talking too quietly or holding the microphone too far away from their mouth or simply not even thinking about talking into the microphone and you start to get frustrated because they are doing it wrong and the people can't hear what they are saying. Right, So you try to push the fader a little bit up and everything starts feeding back and you grab a graphic EQ and start pulling out frequencies and it's not quite working because it seems like all the frequencies are feeding back. There's a bigger, more fundamental problem that is very often overlooked, especially by less experienced sound engineers. And if you fix that, most of your feedback problems will just go away on their own without even needing to use a graphic EQ. And I know what you're doing because I also went through that. As soon as feedback happens, you grab the gain knob and turn it down because somebody in the past told you that the gain is the sensitivity of the microphone. Woo. If the microphone is grabbing sound from the speakers and feeding back, the microphone must be too sensitive. So I should make it less sensitive to fix that problem. And I turn down the preamp gain. That's wrong. It just doesn't make sense, and I'll tell you why. If you look at the materials that the diaphragm is made out of, yes, you could describe that as more sensitive to sound pressure because it might be lighter than another material and can move faster and recreate higher frequencies better. But the microphone itself has nothing to do with the gain of the preamp. The microphone is already receiving sound, sound is happening all around, and the diaphragm is moving. And that movement of the diaphragm with the coil and the magnet creates an electrical signal that goes through the cable to your input on your console. And after that comes the preamp gain. The gain is not making the microphone hear more sound or hear less sound or more sensitive or less sensitive. The microphone is hearing sound, goes to the console, it arrives at the preamp, and at the preamp, you decide how much you want to amplify it. And that's the level that is going into the channel. Okay, so if the gain of the microphone is not the real problem, can you guess what's the actual problem? Your speakers are way too loud. That's it. If you're setting up sound yourself from scratch, hopefully you know what you're doing. But if you are working in a place where there's already a sound system set up by someone, you will tend to assume that they know what they're doing and they set it up correctly, but oftentimes you will find that the speakers are way too loud. And because of that, you will tend to have your input levels a lot lower. And when the input level is lower, it's closer to the noise, to the ambient noise that you don't want. Because remember, the microphone hears everything. At the preamp, you're just amplifying that signal. You're not making the microphone hear more or less. So if the signal that you do want is close to the signal that you don't want, and your speakers are loud, they are amplifying everything. So you are also amplifying the ambient noise that you don't want. And what's in that ambient noise? It's the sound of the speaker. And so the sound from the speakers are getting back into the microphone and feeding back. Do you understand now what's going on? Okay, so what's the solution? Bring down your speakers. Sometimes you'll have to bring them down a lot. Same goes for stage monitors. They are also speakers, right? So don't be afraid of grabbing the master fader of the bus for the monitor and turning it down. You should have plenty of signal going into the mixer and going into the buses. And the last stage is the speaker. The speakers is the last thing you decide how loud you want it to be in the room. But you should have plenty of signal already going on in the mixer. Now you know the solution to the problem, but how do you actually do it? I'm gonna show you an example from an event I did a few days ago. It was held in a hotel. So I brought with me my own mixer and the guitar and keyboard and microphones. The monitor speakers, these little ones on the floor, and they provided the main speakers. They were Beta 3, I'm not sure what model. I didn't like them at all. And they are very, very loud, way louder than a speaker this size should be. And they were kind of harsh, but most speakers that consist of a big woofer and a small tweeter with a big horn usually have a scooped mid-range. Anyway, there were a volume knob and a bass and a treble knob. And these were turned down for some reason. So I just put the bass and treble back to unity or nominal level or just at 12 o'clock. So it's not doing anything on the speaker. And I put the volume level on the speaker at a quarter. I would usually put it at 12 o'clock so it's not adding or taking away anything, but these didn't have a stepped knob. So I just put the volume knob at a quarter and said, you know, that would 
probably be enough. I don't need them to be so loud. I'll show you how much I turned it down from the console. Minus 37 dB. I always run my main left right through a stereo matrix, never directly from the left right bus to the speakers. Because if there are problems in the room, I need to fix them on the matrix, not on my mix. The left right is my mix. The matrix is what's going on with the speakers. But how did I decide that this is the proper level before anyone came in and started singing or playing. If you've watched my previous video about mixing from scratch, I talked about setting input gain and that I would go no less than minus 18 dB. This is a full scale from minus infinity to zero. Zero is the top. So your input levels should not be less than minus 18 and not more than minus six because you want to leave some headroom in case something happens and it gets louder, you don't want to clip. How do you get a full signal of all the frequencies at minus 18 dB? You go to the signal generator. So I'm going to click on the monitor tab and click on the oscillator page, select pink noise, and I'm going to select the destination to be the main left right. And I'm going to set the level right here to what? minus 18. If you have matrices, you will send your main left right to a matrix at zero. So I'm going to go to the main left right right here, go to the sense tab, and you can see I'm sending the main left right to matrix one and two that is serial linked at zero dB. So whatever is on the main left right, whatever the level of the signal is, it's the same level going to the matrix. And if you're on a smaller mixer like the XR series of mixers, XR 18, 16, 12, you don't have matrices, you're going to set the level of the speakers on your main fader. So you go to your matrix that has the main left right and you turn it all the way down. After that, you turn on the signal generator. Okay, because if the speakers are too loud and you don't know it yet, and you blast pink noise at minus 18 dB, it may be too loud and you may damage the speakers. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Slowly start to bring up the faders until it's loud enough in the room. In that case, in that room that I just showed you right now, at minus 37, I think, it was plenty loud. If I turn it up to minus 36, too loud. Pink noise is giving me all the frequency range. I'm not trying with a microphone and talking into it. You can't really know with a person talking into a microphone because how loud should the gain of the microphone be? How loud is the voice of the person? So that signal generator, you know exactly that this is minus 18 dB. And that matrix is the level that is going to the speaker. So depending on the speakers you're using and how much juice they have, you may have these faders higher or lower. And while I was setting this up, I had the faders very low like this, just barely enough signal to check that the speakers are working, that there is signal going to the speakers. So I went to the middle of the room to listen to them. And there was the guy that was working at the hotel and he grabbed the volume knob on the speaker and turned it down. Maybe he thought that the speaker was turned up too much or there was noise or maybe that I don't know what I'm doing. And this frustrates me. That's why I really don't like physical knobs. I prefer always a digital control for level because whenever there is a knob that is in reach, someone will reach for it and turn it. I was like, dude, no, no, just that's me. I, I'm making the noise. Leave it alone. Don't turn it down. There is still something you need to do and it's to check with a pure tone. So I would turn off the signal generator and turn the level down a little bit because with a single tone, it feels louder than the whole frequency range. And then select sine wave and start sweeping from bottom all the way to the top of the frequency range. Turn on the signal generator again, start sweeping from 60 hertz up slowly, very, very, very slowly and check for a frequency that stands out, something that is resonating in the room. Okay, so if you see that maybe at 3 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, it's too harsh, grab an EQ on the matrix and pull down that frequency. I did a high shelf. I cut a little bit of high frequency from 6.8 kilohertz and up because the speakers were a bit too harsh and also at 2 kilohertz and a little bit at 188 and a low shelf below 80 hertz just to balance out the tone of the speakers in the room. And again, that's not on the main mix, that is on the matrix because the problem is with the speakers or with the room, not with the mix itself. That whole thing literally takes less than two minutes and you would thank yourself for it because during the event, somebody was talking into the microphone and had a quiet voice and was holding the microphone a bit far from their mouth. So I went to that channel and pushed it up, pushed it up, kept pushing, kept pushing. I pushed it up all the way to plus 10. And guess what? Nothing happened. It was loud enough for everybody to hear clearly what the person is saying. And I had 
zero feedback. Why? Because the speakers are not louder than they should be. Few people asked me on my how to mix video, how am I pushing the fader up so much of the main vocal? And that's how. Set your speaker level properly and you'll have no problem pushing your faders up. And I remember to record this screen of my phone to show you because I'm mixing on my phone just to show you how the signal looks like, how much level there is on the mixer. And you can see the matrices right here. This thing allows you to confidently mix every time and know that you will have the same mix regardless of the room you're in or the speakers you're using because I know that a SM58 microphone that's a very common microphone that everybody uses or anything similar to that will require about plus 32 dB of gain and an acoustic guitar with an active pickup that's going through a passive DI will require about 23 maybe 24 dB of gain something like that a keyboard also in that range so anywhere between 22 and 30 32 dB, closer to 22 for instruments and closer to 32 for microphones. In most cases, it would be a good enough gain level that is going into the input of the channel. And I would just do my EQ and compression and bring the faders up to zero and know that I have pretty much the same mix every single time. And that's very relieving if you think about it, because you can get used to how things sound or I might even say how things look like on the mixer, although you're mixing with your ears, not with your eyes. But when when it comes to input levels, you just have to see it. Okay, so quick recap. Before you send any channel to your main mix, have everything muted. Send your main left right to a stereo matrix at 0 dB. Then assign your main outputs to that matrix. So in my case, output 15 and 16 is matrix 1, 2. Then bring down the faders of the matrix all the way down so that no sound is coming out of the outputs. And go to your signal generator and generate pink noise at minus 18 dB on the main left right because that main left right is going through the matrix and then you would slowly bring up the faders of the stereo matrix to have sound in your speakers until it's loud enough when you feel like it's getting a bit too loud just pull back a little bit until it's not too loud anymore and that would be the level of your speakers and then you would mix normally and most of your feedback problems will go away i promise now if there is a certain problem a certain frequency that is ringing out in the room or there's certain objects that are creating reflections sure use the graphic EQ, but it will be easy because you'll just only remove one or two frequencies that are feeding back and that's it. You wouldn't bring down everything. If you liked this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you don't know how to send a bus to a matrix or the main left right to a matrix, click on the video on the screen right now and I will see you there.